passage. When, when Moses died, God chose Joshua to become a leader of God's family and God promised them a new home. But there's a tiny, tiny problem. The, there were people already living there and those people were big and robust. This put fear in God's people. But God told Joshua, be strong and do not be afraid. We will lead the Israelites into the land of Canaan. So, so, so all they had to do is to be courageous and, and trust in the Lord. The, those who put faith in them died early, but Joshua and some other Israelites who could trust God fully, when the time was right, they were able to cross the river Jordan and reach the land of the promised land. You can read this in Numbers 27 and Joshua 2 and 3. Bye bye. church together <laughs> next week which we are so excited about we are continuing our series of all through history and all of you should have a timeline and you may have noticed that next on the timeline is Deborah now there's a book in the Bible called Judges and that's what we're going to be looking through over the next few weeks and Deborah is someone who was also a prophetess, which is a prophet, which means she hears from God and she tells people what God is saying to them. Now, do you know what a judge is? I'm going to give you 10 seconds to say out loud what you think a judge is and what do you think they do? So a judge is somebody who enforces the law and if you've done something wrong you may go and see a judge and they will decide what your punishment is and Deborah was one of those people and we're going to learn about how she trusted God and how she led others to trust God too but first of all what have we got to do Emma? We've got our action worship song! Woo! enormous boat that kept the birds and animals afloat the Lord was good the Lord was strong and no one lived his life for him Moses led his people through the sea taking them away from slavery the Lord was good the Lord was strong and Moses lived his life for him. Comes to me. 
tried to take away our sin So we could get to know our God again The Lord is good, the Lord is strong And we will live our lives for Him It's about a lady called Deborah, um, as we're starting looking at some judges. So take a little seat, we're gonna watch video and get comfortable. God's story, Deborah. So part of God's story is about a woman named Deborah. And it goes like this. God's special family was in some trouble. You see, Israel had started to turn away from God and stop following him. But because God loved his family, he wanted to send them a reminder that he was in charge and that it was really important to follow him. And so God allowed Jabin, the king of Canaan, to take over Israel. Now, Jabin had left Sisera, the commander of his armies, in control of Israel. And Sisera, well, he wasn't exactly the nicest guy. In fact, the Bible tells us that he had over 900 iron chariots which meant he was really powerful and he loved to bully the Israelites. The Israelites tried to resist, but they couldn't do it on their own. After 20 long years of trying to rescue themselves, Israel cried out to God and asked him to rescue them. Kids, it's always a good idea to ask for God's help. Even though God was king of his family, he chose people to lead them. They were called judges. One judge was named Deborah. She was also a prophet. Remember, a prophet is someone who hears from God and shares it. Deborah was a strong, powerful woman who listened to God, helped settle arguments among the Israelites, and worked to lead her nation back to their rescuer. Pretty cool, huh? And she had a message from God. He had heard the cries of the Israelites. So Deborah sent for a man named Barak and told him that if he took 10,000 men up to a place called Mount Tabor, she would bring Commander Sisera to him. Then they could stop Sisera from bullying Israel. But Barak wasn't so sure. In fact, he was pretty worried. He said that he would only go if Deborah would come with him. Deborah told Barak not to worry because God was going to deliver Commander Sisera not through him, but through the hands of a woman. Barak obeyed and gathered his men at Mount Tabor. But when Sisera heard about this new army, he rushed out to battle them with all 900 chariots rumbling along the ground. Now, Deborah could have been scared, but she knew God was with her. She said, get ready. This is the day the Lord will give you victory over Sisera, for the Lord is marching ahead of you. So Barak and his men charged Sisera and his army. The soldiers went forward and with God's help, defeated Sisera's chariots. Every one of his soldiers were killed. So Sisera went running for his life. He ran to a tent owned by a woman named Jael and asked her to hide him. She agreed and covered him with a blanket. He was pretty tired from all that running, so inside the tent, he fell asleep. When Barak arrived at the camp, Jael led him to Sisera's body. Just like Deborah had prophesied, Sisera had been delivered to Barak through the hands of a woman. With Sisera gone, God led his special family in battle after battle until Jabin, king of all of Canaan, had to surrender before the little nation of Israel. After that, Deborah and Barak burst into song, praised God, and celebrated how God had saved his family. And then there was peace for 40 years. And that's the story of Deborah. So in case you missed it, here's the quick version. Israel was in trouble. They cried out to God. Deborah told Barak God had a plan. Barak led 10,000 soldiers into battle. God helped the Israelites beat Sisera's chariots. Sisera fled to Jael's tent. Jael killed Sisera. The Israelites defeated Canaan. 
Deborah and Barak praised God in song. There was peace for 40 years, and that's a part of God's story. What an incredible story. Deborah trusted God, didn't she? She heard from God and she trusted him and she followed what he said. And that meant that she led her people into battle, but it was a battle that God had said he had already won. And, you know, we can lead our friends to trust God too. I wonder if you've thought about any ways that you could lead your friends into trusting God. Maybe take a moment, maybe take 10 seconds and have a little think. Maybe ask God, God, how can I lead my friends to trust you? Have a little think. Brilliant. Well, one way that we can do that is by praying for our friends because God always hears our prayers and he's always listening. And so why don't you this week Make a list of your friends that you would love to trust God and spend a little bit of time every day praying for them. Then, maybe if you have a conversation with them, you could offer them some prayer whilst you're with them. That would be amazing. And now we've got time for our memory verse. I wonder if you can remember what it said from last week. Can you remember who we learned about last week? Mm -hmm. Who do we learn about, Nicole? Joshua! Joshua! So our memory verse comes from the book of Joshua, chapter 1, verse 9. And it says, Have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid and do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Brilliant! Well done if you managed to remember that. Let's just do that one more time, shall we? So, have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid and do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Amazing! Well done for remembering that memory verse. And just like God was with Joshua, he was with Deborah, and he's also with you and me. That is amazing. I can't believe that all of these characters we're learning about still relates to us. I and mean, the God is the same God who was with Deborah and the same God with us. It's amazing, exactly. isn't it? Now it's time to pray and Ruth is going to lead us in prayer. Ruth is from St John's Church, so Ruth, over to you. Good morning. Today we are going to be praying. We are going to be talking to God. Now we know that God is all around us and always listening, but sometimes it can be a little bit difficult to talk to somebody that we can't see. So to help us, we're going to use one of these. This is a teaspoon. And we're going to use a teaspoon to help us think about our prayers and what we're going to say to God. So if you're at home, jump up, go and find yourself a teaspoon and then run back here really quickly so that you're ready for the prayers. Go. Make yourself comfortable, get yourself in a calm position because we are going to talk to God. Okay, have you got a teaspoon? Good. Now, if you've done any cooking and you've used a recipe and you've needed a teaspoon of ingredients, rather than writing the words teaspoon on the recipe, you might see the letters T S P. And we're going to use these letters to help us think about what we want to pray to God about. So first of all, T. T stands for thank you. So we are going to say thank you to God for all the good things in our lives. I'm going to say a couple of things to say thank you for, and then you can add a couple after me. So, hold your teaspoon. Let's think about the things we want to say thank you to God for. Dear God, thank you so much for our friends and family. Thank you that even in these difficult times, you care for us and you love us, and you will look after us and keep us safe. Amen.
All right, that was T. The next letter is S, and S stands for sorry. It's really important that we say sorry to God for the things that we've done wrong, because nobody is perfect. So hold your teaspoon again, nice and tight, and we are going to say sorry to God. Dear God, we are sorry that we don't always do what you want us to do. We're sorry for the things we've done wrong, the times that we were unkind, the times that we didn't listen to your rules and your advice, and the times when we hurt other people. Please help us to think about you and stop us from doing the wrong things next time. Amen. And finally, our next letter is P. P stands for please. So we are going to ask God for things. And it's okay to ask God for things because God listens and he cares and he wants good things for us. So last time, hold your teaspoon and let's talk to God. Dear God, Please look after the people I care about. Please keep them safe. And please protect us as we look forward to Christmas. Help us have a safe and loving time. Amen. So we've used our teaspoon. We have said thank you. We have said sorry and we've said please to God. And next time you use a teaspoon, if you're eating your yoghurt, if you're cooking, if you're stirring something, just remember that you can use that time to talk to God because God is always listening. Goodbye. Let the king let the king of my heart be the mountain where I run, the fountain I drink from, oh, he is my song. Let the king of my heart be the shadow where I hide, the ransom for my life, oh, he is my song.
questions, everybody. Now, just before we finish, we have our craft for the week. So, we've been learning all about Deborah, and now the Bible tells us that Deborah liked to spend a lot of time under a palm tree. And whenever she hosted her court and she judged the people, she would do that under a palm tree. So, you have a palm tree craft Ooh. in your packs. And what you will do, are uh, the instructions are all in your pack so you'll know what to do when you find it. But it'll look something like this. Although yours will look much better than mine because I forgot to colour mine in. Oh, <laughs> I think I'm going to go do that now during the rest of the service. Great shout. So you guys, you enjoy the rest of the service and do your craft and adults listen out to hear about all the Christmas services we've got coming up because it's super exciting. Today is the first Sunday of Advent, Yay! which is really exciting, which means Christmas is only four weeks away. <laughs> ah, a little bit mad. But please do look out for the services that we've got going on. Um, some will be online, some will potentially be in, in person, which are really, really exciting. So we hope you have a great morning, guys. Enjoy your crafts. And feel free to steal some of your pictures. We love seeing you guys. But next week we'll be there in person. Yes. So um, definitely at St Margaret and St John's there will be children's work in the morning. So we hope you have a lovely week and see you soon. See you very soon. Bye. Shine from the inside out that the world will see you live in me. Shine from the inside out that the world will see you live.